we'll turn your Bibles to the book of 2 Timothy, <coughs> chapter 4. We're going to get a, we're going to read some out there. I was uh, going through my Bible the other day and was looking for something that I just was looking I didn't, nothing in particular, but I've seen uh, uh, is God able to deliver? And I had, jot, I had it jotted down uh, uh, in my Bible. And I thought, well, we need to uh, encourage everybody. You know, there might be somebody uh, that's down, downhearted and down encouraged, and uh, and the Lord needs to kind of lift them up a little bit. So we want to try to talk to you just a little bit about some of the things that uh, God delivers. And, and you know, you go through the Bible and you uh, we'll think about uh, Abraham, Daniel, uh, Paul, and <coughs> Peter, and uh, just so many of them. Jonah. Right. Uh, you know, there there was so there are so many good examples to uh, to use in there, and uh, I, I would that we uh, would get encouraged and get uplifted because we understand uh, and we know that God is our Father. Uh, he loves us. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Bible says, would, uh, would a father give a, his child a serpent or an egg or things of this nature? And uh, so we uh, we need to kind of stiffen up just a little bit and say, well, hey, uh, I've got a father that uh, owns a cattle of a thousand eels. Amen. Only, you know, uh, we don't need to be discouraged. And so, this morning, uh, in the book of Second Timothy, and of course, when you see this, you may have to think it not to uh, what I've been saying, but anyway, Paul is writing to Timothy, and, and uh, Paul has had a hard time of it, and of course, in, in uh, one of the scriptures there, he said, I've, uh, I've uh, fought, a, fought a good fight, and I've kept the faith, and uh, I'm ready to be offered up. And so, but anyway, in verse one of second of uh, chapter four of Second Timothy, he says, "I charge thee therefore be, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at His appearing and in, at His and His kingdom." Now he's telling Timothy, I believe this morning, how that it's going to be when Jesus Christ uh, gets the word from His Father God and says, "You go get my children." And Jesus is going to step out on the cloud, according to the scriptures, and he's going. He because and you say, well, cloud where? Well, when he left, how did he leave? He left right. in, in a cloud. Amen. He said he will come back the same way. And so he's going to step out on this cloud. He's going to come back. He's going to say, as he did in the book of Revelation four one, uh, as he was uh, speaking to John, come up hither. And I believe that I believe that this is a type of what that that uh, uh, Jesus meant for us to, to understand in this uh, chapter 4 of, of uh, the book of Revelations. And, and I, want, I, I just got to read it to you because uh, it meant a lot more to me than I realized it did. But in chapter chapter 4, let me get there. And uh, in verse 4 and, and in verse 1, <clears throat> and John says, after this, or after he uh, had... Uh, uh, sat down on the throne after Jesus had ascended to heaven. And of course, that's where he's at now. And so we can determine this. He's going to speak this to us one day. Amen. He says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit. Now, I thought about these things, people will get, listen, uh, and immediately I was in the Spirit. Well, when the rapture takes place, and Jesus says, come up here, then what's He rapturing? The glorified body. He's not rapturing the Spirit because it's already gone. But Paul, uh, uh, John says here, and immediately I was in the Spirit. That connection was made there with John, and he went up into the, into the portals of heaven, and he seen things that were unspeakable, unmentionable, and so uh, I, I, I think I say this this morning. This is how it's going to be with us whenever the rapture takes place. Now, back in our lesson this morning, he says, uh, 
Uh, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick, which is the those that are saved, those that have been quickened and made alive. And he says, and the dead at, the, at his appearing and his kingdom. Now we know this morning that there's going to be two resurrections according to the, the Revelations 20. Right. And we're going to see these the quick brought forth and they're going to unite with that soul that has already went on, that spirit that's already went on at, at the time of the physical death. And they've been laying there for hundreds of years, but it's going to, it's going to be a, a uniting there. And that we're, we're going to be in, in the presence of Jesus Christ, the, the King and the Lord. And so he says, and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. So we see also that the dead are mentioned in that. And you can say, well, that may mean the dead in the flesh. Well, it may mean. But it, dead most of the time speaks of those that have not known the Lord Jesus Christ and, his, and, and have uh, made their home uh, abode uh, with the devil. But anyway, we know this morning that these dead that, that, that are not raised when Jesus says, come up hither, will lay in that ground uh, for another thousand years. And here's when that uh, the uh, all the things that are going to take place, and the and the Lord is going to set up His kingdom here on earth. And so we see that these things are going to happen according to God's word, and we should be encouraged about these things because listen, we are not fighting a losing battle. Amen. Uh, we may we may die in this old flesh, and we will uh, if we if if the Lord delays his coming we will and if we don't we'll be changed but anyway we should not be discouraged with the thoughts of dying or the thoughts of the things that this world has to offer us in uh, uh, the bad treatment or all this we should not be discouraged and uh, we should look forward every day listen people we should we should when we get up in the morning we should look up to the sky and say this could be the day amen and we should be ready. We should be ready when that for that day. And you know, he uses the scriptures over there where he says, "If the good man of the house had known what time the thief would come, he would have been waiting for him." Right. And listen, we this morning ought to have our our, our clothes ready, have our pack, have our thing packed that we need to be packed, and that is close to the Lord. Our works should be right close to the Lord, be pleasing to it, and we should be ready. And when we hear that, hey, we're gone. Amen. We're gone. And so yeah. this this morning, uh, please, please accept this as God's Word because it's going to happen and we need to be encouraged. We need to uh, understand that this world is not our home and we're just passing through. And Amen. hey, we're going to go to be with the Lord. So Timothy is writing these things to, I mean, Paul is writing these things to Timothy, and he loved Timothy. He called him Tim, uh, son Timothy, and so he loved him uh, as, a, as a son. And he says here, he said, preach the word. Amen. Be instant in season. Uh, be without delay. Instant. Right then, if God speaks to your heart, and says, hey, preach this to the people. Preach this to the people. If he's on a, on a corner, I hear somewhere in a town, if the Lord says, preach the word, be instant, you preach the word. You, you, if you have an opportunity to witness to someone, you witness to someone. Amen. Be instant with it because don't hold back and say, well, they might not like that. They may, they may not... Uh, appreciate me well. The thing of it is, what you speak to them may keep them from uh, uh, being in hell. Right. It might. It might. It might give them something to to think about, and the Lord might use that. And I know what we say, the Lord uses. Uh, uh, and and I know that so many people push this off one side, and says, "Oh, the old phony don't know what he's talking about." But listen, it's their problem. Once you see that, so he said, "Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season." And of course, there's no there's no season. If you're in season or out of season, he says, preach the word. And I know Brother Larry has got up in his pulpit, and I know other preachers has too. And listen, it was out of season. 
It wasn't, you, you know, you, you, you fought and you, you studied and you, you wondered about this and you wondered about that. But listen, before the service was over, listen, all things came together. Amen. But you let the devil fight you with this thing. You let the devil fight you with witnessing or whatever. And you say, oh, well, it's, it's, you know, it's not the right time. Listen, it's the time when the Holy Spirit says for you to right. do that. You do that. Now, he says here, for the time will come. Right. People, listen, the time will come. Well, I believe now that you can eliminate the word will and not take nothing away from God's word. I'm not saying that. But the time is here. Right. The Amen. time is here. And the time has been here for a long time because it says here, uh, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But here's the thing. Regardless of where they endure it, if they accept it or they believe it, it's our responsibility as children of God to proclaim it and say Jesus Christ is Lord. And listen, that you, you have to be saved in order to be with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. Amen. And so this is some of the things that we need to do. So he says, The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. So this morning, gathering, uh, 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 bringing together people or heaping shall heap to themselves. Uh, listen, that's what the world is wanting right now. And you can see it. You can see it uh, even if you want to turn your television on. You can see it where that there's hundreds of thousands of people in these big auditoriums and things like this. And the man getting up there and preaching a little sermonette. And uh, they have heaped to themselves teachers right. and having itching ears. Now, in uh, chapter 3 there in verse 1, he says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, bolstered, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, Truce breakers, false accusers, incontentions, fierce despisers of those that are good, traded, 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 heavy-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, and that's the reason why that they're going to heap to themselves uh, together someone that will tell them how good they are, someone that will right. tell them it's not necessary for you to do this or not necessary because the Bible says it. it's not necessary. God knew when He made you that He wasn't going to have you doing all of these things. But listen, they're telling lies to people right. and these people are gawping it up uh, hand over fist. And so here He says here in verse 4, and they shall turn away their ear from the truth and shall be turned into fables. What is a fable? It's a, just a fairy tale. Right. And that's what they're going to be listening to as a fable, a fairy tale, something that somebody will push to them and they'll gawk it up and say, hey, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do that. You don't need to go down our church on such and such time every time they open it up. These people are crazy. They want to everybody to come and everything. Listen, the Bible says when the church meets for all to be there. Amen. And when, you know, these things people, they, they put out and, uh, and they, they, they push it out to people and they accept it because it pleases the flesh. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why you have that itchy ear is because of this old flesh. It wants to hear how good it is, but it don't want to take that much time to go down to the church all the time. It wants, it just wants to be different. It's and it's and it, it is of the devil. The flesh is of the devil. You're right. And so here we see the the what happened. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist make full proof of the ministry. So here's some of the things that Paul told Timothy. Listen, Timothy, uh, he says, but watch thou in all things and endure afflictions because Paul could tell him why that he needed to endure afflictions because Paul even wrote down in, in one of the scriptures there about the great afflictions that he had had and how that uh, uh, he had been drugged out of the thing, had, dead and all these things. 
And so he's encouraging Timothy and saying, Timothy, you endure them, you look for them, because it's going to happen. And it's the same with us this morning. Listen, when people say, hey, uh, you know, they, uh, they said things that weren't true about me, or they did this, or they did that. Hey, it's afflictions. Mm -hmm. It hurts. It hurts. Right. And when you know when, when somebody, uh, especially a, a, a person that's a Christian, and when he's when he's when he when he hurts when he hurts your feelings, listen, that's the deepest hurt you can have. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it hurts to the core. And listen, if you're not careful, it will hinder you. And that's why Paul uh, uh, Paul was telling Timothy. He says, endure that. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it weaken you because, hey, they are going, it's going to happen and the devil is using them. So he says, and do the work of an evangelist. Preach the word, carry the word, and, and, uh, and make full proof of the ministry. In other words, tell the people the truth and how that you can take other scriptures and prove to them if they will accept it that this is true. Now, again... Here he says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Amen. So Paul, uh, Paul had fought a good fight, and he, uh, he was in the will of the Lord, and he knew what he was talking about here because, listen, he was one of the great, the great writers of the New Testament. And he says here, he says, I have fought a good fight. I know, and listen, I know this morning that uh, a Christian that is truly in love with the Lord knows when he's in the will of the Lord, and he knows when he's right about things, and he knows whether or not he's slipping, or whether he's sliding, or whether he's staying on the, on the straight and the narrow, and he's doing what God would have him to do. He knows that. And Paul says here, he says, I fought a good fight. And listen, I this morning I don't I don't want to praise of nobody. I don't. But listen, I believe this morning that I have fought a good fight. I believe that there's all of us here have have, have took a stand, and we're fighting a good fight. And so listen, this morning uh, with this, you can be uh, uh, delivered from all of those old things that people say about you and all this because listen. God says, you're, you're my son. Amen. You're in my will, and you're doing what you tell me to do. Uh, so listen, he says, uh, uh, but watch thou both things endure and endure affliction. And now he says, in verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now, what, why, how could he feel, feel this, that he had fought a good fight? Well, uh, in, uh, in some of the places he said he fought at Ephesus and other places like that, uh, uh, these old uh, 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 evil spirits. In one place there, he said Demas, uh, um, not Demas, but uh, uh, the one had done me much harm, and he warned Timothy about him. Uh, uh, I can't think of the guy's name right now, but anyway, he made the, made the gold things for one of the goddess. But anyway, he said, these, some of these things ha have happened to me. And he says, you be aware of them. Because, listen, they'll come to you and do, try to do the same thing for you. So he said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. And I have kept the faith. And this, this morning, people, is the most important thing in the world. is keeping the faith. Because if you let your faith go down on you, and you get to doubting uh, your prayer life, you, you, you get to doubting the way that you're uh, trying to preach or teach or whatever. You get to, you, you, and the devil wants to throw a chunk in that cog every way he can. Right. And he'll he'll run you off the side, and he'll get you he'll get you so discouraged and downhearted that you won't even feel like standing up before somebody and leading prayer. And so this morning we don't need to be discouraged. Amen. We don't need to be discouraged. We need to be saying hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Yeah. So here in uh, verse 8, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And here is us. And not to me only, but unto all them also 
that love is appearing. Amen. And this morning again, you know, we need to keep our eyes open. Right. We need to be looking for him to come. We need to we need to we need to search the skies every every day for his appearance. And I, I'm doing I'm saying this spiritually. We need to be we need to be packed up, ready to go, people. Amen. Because that, these things here, uh, 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 it, it pertains right to us. Paul is Paul is saying here, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, and he says, not for me only. And listen, we've got a crown of righteousness laid up for us if we if we're serving the Lord and have the faith in our soul, and we have a crown of righteousness laid up for us, and we will receive it one day, and it. You know, and that's all that that's all through faith. Amen. Because I have not seen the crown, you have not seen the crown, but Paul said he knew that he had one, and if he knew that he had one, and he says here, not for me only, but for all those that serve the Lord, and you know this morning in your heart whether or not you're serving God. Mm -hmm. You know it, and I know it. And so we need to look forward to that crown of, of, of righteousness, the crown of life, the crowns, so many crowns that we'll have that we can look forward to. And, the, and, and you know, as Brother Larry has mentioned before, a lot of times about casting those crowns and Jesus laying them down there and saying, you're worthy. You're worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of this crown. But you are because you made it possible for me to do what I did. To gain these rewards, or that I can give them to you. You have now. Do thy diligence. He's 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 in bad shape. He said, "Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me." For Demas hath forsaken me, right? Having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Christians, that was some of Paul's companions, said they have gone to. Galea, Galea, Titus and the the Emmaus, Maya. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. And so we see here that uh, all of these, all of these have left Paul. Uh, by himself, except for Luke, the physician, and I'm sure that Luke was trying to minister to him and uh, give him the, the best medicines and stuff or whatever. But he was the he was the physician, and he says here, uh, in other words, he he was sick and he was ready to go. But he said in th in, in uh, twelve, and Tychus have I sent to Ephesus. The cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee and the books, but especially the parchment. So you see, Paul, Paul, even in his downtrodden time, even when he was sick and even when he was discouraged or whatever, what did he ask for? Well, he, he needed the cloak to keep him warm. But he said, but especially the parchment. Right. Those things that he had wrote, or it was parts of the Bible, I don't know which, but it was it was something to do with God's Word. And, and it might have been Bibles, it might have been uh, letters, but he says here, uh, and the books, but especially the parchment. So uh, he was still he was still wanting what was what was best for the people and he was still wanting to please God because he said especially the parchments and so we see that he was still he was still trying to serve the Lord now he, here is this guy's name Alexander Alexander the coppersmith this is the one that he warned Timothy about couldn't remember Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil the Lord reward him according to his work Amen. so he wasn't. He wasn't saying. He wasn't saying, telling God what to do or this. But he said he's done me much. He's done me much uh, damage, and he's t he's warning Timothy. When if you run into him, you be aware of him. And this this morning is, you know, sometimes we, as God's people, 
we know of people that want to hurt Christians. And so sometimes we have to say, hey, watch that person because I don't believe he's right. And that's what Paul was saying here. He said, you watch Alexander, the coppersmith, because he did you much damage. And he said, uh, uh, of, uh, of whom be thou aware, aware also, for he hath greatly withstood our word. And so the word was the word of God. Amen. And Paul was preaching it to him there, and he was he was he was doing everything he could to fight against them. But Paul still he's he's not he's not discouraged to the point that he's giving up because he says, "Here, bring me that parchment. I want I want to read it again. I want to study it again." And it reminds me of a little bit of a of a John the Baptist when he sent his to the those to, to to Jesus to say, "Art thou the man?" Are thou the one that we should look for, or is there another? Uh, you know, John the Baptist knew Jesus. He baptized Jesus. But listen, he said, Art thou the one? And you, you can imagine his condition, but anyway, Jesus encouraged him. He said, You go tell John. You go tell John what what you see. He told his disciples, said, You go tell him how you see the sick healed and the dead raised, and the, 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 the word preached. And, uh, uh, this is the, the this is what uh, Paul was telling Timothy this morning about these things. There he says uh, in verse uh, 15, uh, 16, At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsake me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me Amen. and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion and the, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto His heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so that this morning uh, is our uh, lesson. Uh, I hope that uh, a few things that I read, a few things maybe that I said will encourage us uh, today uh, to not be discouraged. Uh, we, we've got a great thing to look forward to. Amen. And, uh, uh, death, shouldn't be a, death shouldn't be a fear. I know the body will fear it, but death is just a, a beautiful doorway that mm -hmm. leads to eternal life. Amen. So, uh, this morning, I hope that each one of you have uh, got a blessing. I have a blessing. Thank you all for listening. Amen.